from meeting the Muslim woman of your dreams a to a bottle of Henny to and it's on and popping? Your Honor, he is a snake. He is doing the same thing to All me right, and my well. daughter. All right, well, well. You know, what don't even play on the You sorry. walked in and saw what? Booty in the air. <laughs> At this point, we know you lied. Listen, we can either get this resolved or y'all can go on back home and act a fool in the street because you're we not going to act it up in here. Yeah, right. I am serious. After being fooled into getting by a married man, Miss Brown was desperately standing in court to fight for the paternal fight of her daughter's blessing. The irony was that the man she trusted wasn't only denying her child, but also any recollection of being with her. We were married. He lies and he will lie and say that we wasn't, but we were. Right. He lies about everything, Your Honor. To visit Who married us? Can I talk? Can I see the Can paperwork? I talk? What paperwork? I ripped exactly. it up. Yeah, ladies, take a breath. This is about a child. Streaming and blaming just proves nothing. Anyway, amid this mess, the judge was caught up in the fact that how Mr. Shinoster managed to get married to another woman while he was still married to the woman standing next to him. Take me to the beginning of your relationship with Mr. Shinoster. I won't okay. understand this. We met through a mutual friend, which we basically had a long distance type of relationship. We talked on the phone, we Facebooked, all of that. So we don't court. We meet, we get married. That's how it go. Don't court, get married. Right after meeting on Facebook. Bad move, mommy. As it was clear how being this green had worked for the advantage of smirk face con, the couple had gotten married over the phone, which defendant denied as in his words, Miss Brown seemed too fast for him. I met her Where on were Facebook. You? We had, we had, Inbox, what? We, we inbox back and forth. So I called her because I was confused, like, where am I coming to? She said, here's your Abu. Abu is father. To Talking to her, her three kids. kids. <laughs> I've never Come met on. her a day in my life. Oh, when I walked King. in, she said, here's your Abu. You heard Mr. Shinoster. The plaintiff had all of her children calling him their father. But this testimony didn't set too well with mommy. The guy made some really insane remarks about the woman who was the mother of his potential child. I did get <laughs> Your exactly. Honor, Your Honor, I did consider like marriage. Her friend told me. The only thing I could think about doing was mm -hmm. going to get a bottle of Henny because it was on and popping now. You go from meeting the Muslim woman of your dreams a to a bottle of Henny to and it's on Henny. and popping. She was, she was trying to get popped off. That's it. Wow, aren't you so innocent getting tempted by a strange little girl? And I'm sure even though he wouldn't admit to giving in, there was something fishy part that Mr. Shinoster was trying to hide with his loud babbling. And we all know that judges look past such things quite well. What I'm trying to understand is, is marriage or no marriage, you still say you had sex with her. Yes. Yeah. And, and it was unprotected. Uh, yep. Yes, You're unprotected. Yep. Mr. Shinoster, how long did this relationship last with Ms. Brown? This 48 hours, exactly, Donna. He lies so, about every single day. I got there on a Friday, I left Sunday. Set. Any woman would be pushed to the edge when is treated like that. So Miss Brown kept shouting from the top of her lungs that her alleged father was nothing but a conniving lair who dumped her right after sleeping with her. After this, judge asked the Oreide plaintiff about the pregnancy. Soon after you ended the relationship with Mr. Shinoster, were you intimate with somebody else? Six weeks after. And how soon after that did you find out you were pregnant? When I found out I was pregnant, I was six weeks and three days. I had sex with another man three days before I found out I was pregnant. And so when you found that out, did you immediately call Mr. Shinoster? Yes. And what did you say to him? I said I'm pregnant. And we all know how that revelation would have gone with Mr. I'm so innocent. So as we had anticipated, Mr. Shinoster claimed that the other guy was the real father because he was on the profile picture of the plaintiff and there was no way that baby was his. Nonetheless, all of this was too much for his wife. I would rather him be her father than you. You have yet to see my child. Ms. Doug She's six Ms. months. Douglas. Ms. Douglas, I know this is difficult for you. If you need to leave the courtroom, you may be excused. That running way made sense. Who would want to be part of such a mess? Coming back to the other guy in the picture, the outraged woman told the court, just because Blessing's real father had refused to step up, her boyfriend was falling into the void. So, Miss Brown, what you're saying is, because Mr. Shinoster failed to step up, this other man did. That's why maybe people mistake him for being Blessing's biological. He's the but only he is not. one. Everybody knows. I know all of this is a bit confusing, but the real shock bomb was still to come. It turns out that Defedna was trying to fool Judge Lake by going round and round in circles, which never works. We won't ruin it by telling you. Let me show you. Mr. Shinoster says, good looking husband, beautiful wife equals good looking babies. I'm just saying I love you and thanks you. Miss Brown, you respond, I love you too. Why are you thanking me? Laugh out loud. You never married her. I never married her. 
So why you say good looking husband? I chose wrong. I chose my words uh, unwisely. We know you lied. With all of that on the plate, Judge, the judge was all ballistic in the courtroom, and the defendant was not ready to put his guard down either, which led him to act in a frenzy that Jerome had to calm him down. Why then do you say good-looking husband and beautiful wife That's how equals good-looking babies? That's how I talk. You could still potentially be Blessing's biological father because you admit you had unprotected sex the with her. The things add up. Apart from lying and making such a fool of himself on national TV, Mr. Shinoster's doubts had some ground. That's why the judge wanted to give him a fair chance for that, and no matter how much one might deny it. But when such ambiguity calls for DNA results... It has been determined by this court. Mr. Shinoster, you are the father. <laughs> I always give the same opportunity and I hope people take advantage of it. And if you are okay, I would like to give Mr. Shinoster an opportunity to meet Blessing in my chamber. For some people, the very thought of their grandchildren is utter bliss. Unfortunately, Miss Jackson wasn't one of them. As the woman refused to accept a baby girl at any cost, FYI, such stubbornness never leads to good ends. Y'all, I never accept the baby. That's a lie. Yeah. Tell me what happened. Okay, she came to my home with her mother and another family member. Let me remind you, this child was already four months old. Um, I never even heard of this young lady. That's because you don't her... have a relationship with your son. Yes, I do. But I, I have mean, a relationship. I, he lives in my I household. Mean, Big Mama told the court that her son never had mentioned the defendant or anything about having a child with her. Even though Miss Pickens was in love with more men at the conception time, she was persistent that Miss Jackson's locked son was the baby daddy. So they might have not been dating and all. Put How many guys were you sleeping with? Two. She don't know. Two. She don't know. Two. When you met her son, yes. you had a boyfriend. Yes. So somehow you get yes. into a relationship with Miss Jackson's son. Yes. Okay. Me and her son was messing around every and we day. Had every day. Listen. Unprotected sex every day. And but they were completely in each other's hair. However, it got revealed that after breaking up with the alleged father, the defendant chose to mess around with another guy. Who was her first pick as daddy? At the time your child was conceived, having sex with any other man, yes, Miss well, Jackson's yeah. son and the boy who? who I was going with after him. After him? Yes. And you thought he was the father yes, at first? Sir. Yes. Yeah, seems like Markle changed her mind. But the question was, what brought such a change of heart? In baby mama's defense, it was Miss Jackson's son who kept pushing that he was the father. Did the plaintiff know about this? So you think they look alike? Yes, they do. Your they honor. look just alike. That's his My son look like Sonya. And no, he does Yes, don't. come on. My son look like, like, like her. Than he does she me. Said her son look like me. No. Yes. Clearly, all of this wasn't convincing enough for the Grams for her child looked like her mommy and her family. Nonetheless, C kept mentioning that mommy had accepted the child. So when the judge implored the plaintiff for this, Miss Jackson went on like this. Step the relationship with this child. Say, we got text messages that we even sit up here and say, lying, I never established a relationship. Lying, I'm that child been to my house if three I, times. If, if that's the case, Your Honor, listen, we can either get this resolved or y'all can go on back home and act a fool in the street because you're we not going to act it up in here. Judge has a point acting like streets weren't going to help anyone. To find the truth, they had behaved civilly. That's why the judge asked Jerome to stand between both stands. So it was established that plaintiff had made no effort whatsoever to warm up for the child. Oh You're God. saying you didn't establish a relationship because you never truly believed this was your son's child, but the child has been to your house on several occasions. Three occasions. So you do acknowledge that your son felt like... Yes, I will say that. If your son says, my mom going to pick up my little girl... Nicole further added that the scheming mother had even gone to the length of faking a pregnancy to nail her son as her man. Wow, an acquisition, isn't it? But the plaintiff kept pressing that the not-so-real babies were twins, because the mother of a real grandchild was pregnant with twins. Did I have my doubt. She have lied about faking a pregnancy, that she was a preg pregnant with twins when she found out Aaliyah was pregnant and come to find out that's a lie because her mother told me it was a lie. You're saying she lied about a second pregnancy? Yes. yes. When she found out Aaliyah was pregnant. She is very jealous of Aaliyah. <sighs> Grim of jealousy is the reason that baby is in this wrangle? But who would put their own child's future in jeopardy just out of envy? Huh? I find that hard to buy anyway. Let's watch what happens next. I was kind of her. Yes, I did lie. And the only reason how you know I lied because I told your son. Right. Why yes, did you yes, lie? I was, yes, I did lie because I was kind of hurt. I was hurt because at the time... So you did it to get back at him. Yes. But sure. you now have to understand why yes. your credibility is about yeah, shot. I okay, now even I think that baby mama is just making the whole thing up. And the judge was mixed too. That's 
That's why the late called Miss Pickens' mother, who also stood firm on the defendant's testimony. She even went to the length of accusing the grandma at the opposite podium. She looked just like hair, eyes, she does looks like this little boy done lived with me for about a month. Right but on. when you knew your daughter had slept with another man around the time of conception, did you say to yourself, well, are we certain that is Miss Jackson's I son? Or did you just go on the look factor? I, no. No. Miss Dates even told the court how she herself confronted her daughter to make sure she wasn't pinning the child on the wrong guy. But Markle assured her mother that another possibility was not the father. That's why Sonia was standing in the courtroom defending her Miss Pickens. She never said Kevin. She said somebody else. Then happened so Kevin came around, and that's when I started seeing her features. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, she do. She got So you hair went like off him. of the fact that you felt like they resembled. Okay. Right. Thank you so much. You may be seated. The judge had listened to both sides with patience and had reminded them that this trial wasn't about them, but rather about the child. The good thing was that Miss Jackson came forward and claimed to take care of the child if DNA proved relatedness. Let's see if she keeps up her words. Mrs. Jackson, you are not <laughs> her grandmother. <laughs> got you. <laughs> <laughs> Honest and straightforward Mr. Buchanan was already duped twice in a paternity trap by two of his ex-girlfriends. Learning the truth the hard way, the baby daddy refuses to fall for the same thing again. Let's see if the third time is the charm or not. DNA testing proved you were not the father. And you now doubt your girlfriend, Miss Stimbridge's six-month-old daughter, is yours. You state she is engaged in sexual affairs outside of the relationship, including with your former friend and roommate. Yes, Your Honor. So the judge started with the doubt part, apparently. Newburn was sure that his girlfriend was floozy, and he even claimed that she had slept with one of his friends, and he found the bitter truth like this. In the jail, under false pretenses, they had the wrong person, and while we was in the car, he had bought some food, and I said, you know, I was eating it, and he was like, why are you eating all my food? And I'm like, I don't care, so I threw it in the back seat at him. And well, there goes the, I slept with your girl comment rubbed in his face really hard. Prior to this information, Miss Stambridge herself had confessed about having a drink with her baby daddy's friend cause. She was lonely with Mr. Buchanan being locked up. You don't drink, I don't care if it's a supermodel, you ain't drinking with somebody that's supposed to be my best friend. You know, you had the right to say no. If so it's are you blaming Miss Stambridge or are you blaming your best friend? I'm blaming her because she knew better. Wow, isn't that a little too much? You would just blame your girlfriend like that. I know that's weird, but hold as there is more coming. And it got two words, Lehman Drops. Well, it was the tonic to get the baby mama in the mood. And once he saw that, he went bananas. Like, I ain't talking about no two candy. two shot glasses laying on the table. When you walked in and you saw the drinks out, in your mind, you thought she's drinking with him again, and she said that was only a one-time okay, thing. Okay, check it out. She told me about the beer, so when you picked me up, why didn't you fair warn me about the liquor before I got home? Why are you gonna let me find that out by myself? Because you forgot. Because you forgot. I didn't forget too you much. Forgot. It was still there, weren't it? Baby mama claims that she got nothing to hide and she had been honest all the time with her man. However, after that, things just got worse between them as even his ex-girlfriend tried to warn him that this best friend was stabbing him in his back by sleeping with his woman. That's why the judge called her in to testify. Why are you mad, You're Jessica? Like, my back why? since day one. I ain't talking to you. Mr. Buchanan says that you Witness, what What exactly did you witness? Did I witness? When I walked in, she all I saw was in the air. I'm you sorry. walked in and saw what? Booty in the air. <laughs> oh, this woman is just a human hurricane. You saw how she entered with a bang. That is clear animosity there. While she was testifying, Miss McNeil used all sorts of non-court language infuriated the baby mama. Both women showed no sympathy for each other, even though there was a baby involved in the mix. This is the, the door to Eric's room. I walked in. Standing right there. Nope, that's a lie, Your Honor. Because I would have seen her. I ain't never seen this girl in my life. You ain't never seen me in your life. No, no, no. That's a lie. Pictures in his Look. phone. Look. Pictures in his phone. Head, head, yeah, in his phone. See, that's, that's right. wrong. I weren't that's even right. laying that way. I weren't even laying. Whatever the whiteness was proposing, the defendant begged to differ from it. According to her, such an incident never took place, but to make her case more stronger. Miss McNeil added the reference to the lemon drop. Yeah, I know there it goes again. I come in to Eric's room to come pick something up. All I saw, her head towards his closet and booty in the air. No. A liquor bottle right here on the counter. I took a shot myself. <laughs> that was about. So it's your position that you were standing here at this point and you could easily see 
Miss Stembridge in a yeah. compromising position with another she man. She was standing right there, Your Honor, because I ain't never seen her the before in my life. Was if right she was standing here. right there, I would have seen her. You can't see me, y'all. You you bug got right eyes. Okay, whatever that proves, because for me, it's just mindless to and fro. Anyway, the baby mama stood firm that the plaintiff and his ex-girlfriend were just making things up and that Mr. Buchanan was the father of her baby girl. I've never known Heather to never come over to Eric's house and not come in his bedroom. Oh uh, no. yeah, I showed up one time and she was there. They wouldn't open the door. That's why she claimed the she ain't never seen me. Closed. Even though the mister checked this out, loved his little girl and wanted to be the biological father, even mommy claimed that he was a great father and that if it was up to her, she wouldn't pick anyone else to father her beautiful baby girl, which we know most rightfully calls for the envelope. Mr. Buchanan, you are her father. Thank you. That's a blessing. Is this you gotta step up now and politely tell Ms. McNeil to exit stage left? The same rodeo was up and running in this case as Mr. Scott appeared in Judge Lake's court to seek her help to uphold his reputation. He claimed that multiple women tried to pin them on him, and DNA results would prove that Ms. Crane was also one of those scammers. You state many women, including the defendant, have dragged your reputation through the mud, claiming yes. you are the father of their children. Yes, sir. You admit to having six kids by three different women, yes, sir. but state that the defendant is not mother number four with child number seven. Yes. However, the baby mama has her own set of allegations lined up. She claimed that the potential father was nothing more than a fraud who trapped her into having his baby while he was married to someone else. Miss Crane, you insist that Mr. Scott has never even offered you a dime. Never. Since your son was born. You're here to make a counterclaim against Mr. Scott in the amount of $5,000. It was revealed that both parties had their deceiving hats on, yet no one was willing to back off. The defendant spilled the beans of truth and claimed that Mr. Scott had been married for nine years, but the plaintiff put on his armor like this. He just said you were in a committed relationship. Yes, we was committed. And you just said, Ms. Crane, that he was married. Major negative. I bet, I bet, major negative. How did you discover? Your Honor, I was seven months pregnant. I didn't know where Marcel was. He used my phone one time. He deleted all his calls. So I went back on the internet, went back to the research, called all the numbers he called, and found out he was married for nine years. So the woman said that when she confronted the man, she and his wife spat on the call. His spouse told her to get the baby aborted. Oh my, my. Why do people stoop so low? No, actually, she he was did. at the woman's house, and he actually picked up the phone. So the lady was like, well, who is this calling from Marcel? I said, well, I'm his baby mama, his girlfriend. She's, he's like, well, how was that when I'm married for nine years with him and he's right here? It seemed Mr. Scott was caught up in his web of lies. Still, he managed to wipe Miss Cranes' accusations and allege that she brought his ex-wife's cousin into the picture. Hmm, his doubts were on point. Miss Crane has a tattoo on her body. Well, I don't know if she still has it, but what she just told me recently that she had it covered up, she has not one, not two, not three, but three dudes named tattoo. No, Your Honor, I had one and that was my ex-boyfriend for five years. Now, the baby that was, she's saying is yours? I don't know if it was one of them men, but the dude that she was with was my ex-wife's cousin. Wow, first messing around, then dating his ex-wife's cousin. Up next, it slipped that mommy was the perpetrator behind all the doubts as her sex life had been giving him the red flag like this. That's one of the things that created doubt in your mind because it created when doubt she, in my mind, period. When, when she, she started covered getting the baby and, up, you're saying she that didn't show of. that baby and tell them that that was your son. You're saying that your ex-wife told you that she said that it's not your son yes and then while she's pregnant she had hickeys on her neck oh my ms crane disclosed that the bombshell dropped on her at the clinic when she found out the man impregnated her and his ex-wife at the same time but the dad did not let the mom play and started squabbling with her and at the doctor she didn't even have a car his wife and she was pregnant at the same time yeah they was oh exactly. wait 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 was. i thought you were divorced was, in they was 2009 together, yeah but mm. we were separated though we were separated we've been honor. divorced but we were separated you were, were divorced yeah we got divorced but then yeah we still messed around from time so you to got time. her pregnant after you yeah. divorced I mean, I admit it. your honor and then when i, I admit asked it. Him, finally judge lauren summoned witnesses to square things off but instead she entered shouting to her vocal cords in her rage like he was a bonehead to her uh oh seemed like mr scott gotta have huge trouble yeah. He is a snake. He is doing the same thing to All me right, with my well. daughter. All right, well, again? You know, what don't even put it on However, 
Harper. It was evident that a new problem had been raised for the mister, and probably he would have to come again, as Miss Kaloon claimed him as the father of her daughter as well, and was demanding a DNA test. What it is you have to add to this? Uh, he's my daughter's father too. My daughter's oh, four my months God. old. That's your ten kid, right? Four months old. Hey. So you claim you also have a mm -hmm. child by him, mm -hmm. and he's denying paternity? He wants paternity tests. I Happened. Yeah, she had no problem. Nothing. No, I communicate with her it's good. There's nothing. no problem with her. Nevertheless, it was clear that the witness's testimony flared up the situation as she brought another case for Judge Lauren, and things were to and fro swinging in between, so it was the time to pop up this paternity issue. Mr. Scott, you are the father. Told you! I am going to order Mr. Scott and Ms. Kalan to go and submit to DNA testing and return to this court because we need to know once and for all if, in fact, you are the father of eight children. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> also still continued a sexual relationship. Yes, with the both of them. Both of them? Yeah. You were having We've sex had with... Sex, I have sex with both of them. Got it. Yeah. See, this is it. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Lord, wow. for... Wow. <laughs> Patience. Because when you downgrade him, you downgrade yourself because you the one laying on your back with your legs open for him every time he calls. Mr. Brown is refusing to believe that he is the father of his child simply because the baby was born prematurely. This is a ridiculous reason, and it's clear that Mr. Brown doesn't understand science. Or does he have another reason for doubting the paternity? This relationship is on the verge of breaking, but will Mr. Brown stay if he finds out that he is the real father? He's also asked for a lie detector test, so what does he think Miss Parker is hiding? You're summoning your boyfriend, Mr. Brown, for paternity test to prove that he is your six-month-old son, Malachi's father. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Brown, you say you stepped up when Malachi was born, but began to have paternity doubts because of Miss Parker's scandalous behavior. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Brown's doubts are apparently based on the fact that Miss Parker got pregnant in June, but the baby was born on January 5th. He's done some research, and he believes that even as a premature baby, the baby should have been born in February. But is he right, or is he just looking for an excuse to deny paternity? You said the dates are not adding up? Mm -mm. What about the dates didn't add up? Well, like she said, we she got pregnant during June. The baby was born in January. I did research, um, and I found out that full-term pregnancy between 39 and 40 weeks. Mr. Parker is stepping in to defend his daughter. He believes that Mr. Brown has trust issues, and he thinks that the baby looks like Mr. Brown, so he should be able to see through his doubts and accept the baby. Mr. Parker is urging Mr. Brown to step up and be a man. Today, let's find out if Mr. Brown is actually the father. I know the situation is obvious that he has trust issues, he has insecurity problems. Obviously, a blind man can see that that's his child. I mean, look at look at the baby, look at him. Yeah, it's, why are you here? Why are you here? I mean, I mean, obviously, you know, you know that's your baby. Oh, Miss Parker is crying, and it's heartbreaking. She wants Mr. Brown to stay in her baby's life because he's the only father the baby has ever known. She doesn't want her child to grow up without a father. I mean, whether he's not or is the father, I feel like I still want to sign the birth certificate because he's been there since day one. He's the only man, like, I love, and, like, I don't want to be with nobody else but him. And I don't know, like, I don't want to interfere with their relationship and their bond. The lie detector results are in. Did Ms. Parker sleep with anyone else during her relationship with Mr. Brown? The lie detector says no, so she was telling the truth. This means that Mr. Brown is the biological father of her child. This is a gripping story with a lot of suspense. Will Mr. Brown finally accept that he is the father of his child? Or will he continue to deny paternity? But one thing is for sure, this is a story that will keep you on the edge of your seat. Mr. Brown, you are not Malachi's father. Ms. Parker, you were asked if during your relationship with Mr. Brown, have you had any type of sexual contact with another man? You said no. The lie detector determined that was the truth. Ms. Parker, I have to ask you, do you know who baby Malachi's father is? Yes. After two decades, imagine the shock of discovering that the man you believe to be your father is now denying his paternity. It's utterly bewildering, isn't it? Poor Ms. Tucker finds herself in this very situation, standing before the court, desperately trying to prove that her father is indeed her biological parent. Will she triumph in this legal battle and reclaim her father's love? Let's dive into the emotional roller coaster. Miss Tucker, you believed another man was your dad until a bomb was dropped on you 10 years ago when your mother admitted that the defendant is your biological father. You opened your case 
to prove to Mr. Hunter that he is your dad. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Judge Luke couldn't help but notice the struggle in Ms. Tucker's eyes as she fought back tears. Raised with the belief that her father played no role in her upbringing, she was led to believe his presence didn't matter. But let's pause and reflect. Shouldn't every person have the freedom to seek out and connect with their true roots? It's heart-wrenching that Ms. Tucker had to accept this for a whole decade. I know you've had to hold so much of this in. What do you do after that? Um, his sister didn't come get me again after that, but I did go home and I talked to my mom about it and she told me it did not matter because she was my mother and father and he didn't do anything anyway. Curiosity peaked. Judge Luke turned to Mr. Hunter, questioning when he discovered the child wasn't his own. Surprise, surprise! As it turns out, he had known the truth since the child's birth. He confessed that upon hearing this news, he vanished into thin air, only to resurface 15 or 16 years later. So when she got pregnant, you were told? Yeah, and she told me the child wasn't mine. And what was your relationship like with Miss Tucker? You were dating exclusively? You were boyfriend and girlfriend or just... Yeah, for a short while. She told me she was pregnant. She said it was the baby wasn't mine. I left and I got my life together. And I stayed gone for 15, 16 years. I came back to North Carolina hearing rumors that she was mine. Hold on tight, folks, because things are about to take a grotesque turn. Even though the child was undeniably Mr. Hunter's, Adrian, the mother, told him she wasn't his daughter, prompting him to flee. But wait, it gets even crazier. When he returned, fueled by swirling rumors, he ended up with Adrian's own sister. Talk about a mind-boggling twist. Both Adriana and Mr. Hunter seem to have lost their grip on reality. I, I couldn't leave it alone. I'm like, there is something bizarre happening here. He left after you said the baby's not yours, right? Yes, ma'am. Now, you told everybody else that you thought you confided in and people had thoughts. Yet, amidst the chaos, Ms. Tucker emerges as the epitome of strength, taking matters into her own hands, determined to unravel the truth and set things right. Let's applaud her courage. After all, she is the one who has endured the most in this tumultuous ordeal. Judge Luke, touched by Adriana's plight, extends a sympathetic gesture and requests the envelope. Because of all of these dynamics, you're the one that suffered. One thing I want to say to both of them I didn't is that this is about me. And I feel yeah, I like someone, both of them are just kind of nonchalant about it because this is the most I've heard out of all of this time. It took for me to have to take matters into my own hands to get both of them here and answers. And it should not have happened like that, I feel like. I just don't think it should have happened like that. Yeah. You are right. Yeah. This is exactly why this courtroom exists. And now, the moment that has been waited for, the verdict. Brace yourselves, because it may not be the outcome Adriana desired. Alas, Mr. Hunter is proven not to be Ms. Tucker's biological father. It must have shattered her heart, yet she displays remarkable resilience, asserting that her sole intention was to uncover the truth, allowing both parties to move forward without further interference. Mr. Hunter, you are not the father. I'm sorry, Adriana. It's okay. I just want an answer so that I don't have to keep interrupting his life or, you know, keep going through this in my own life, so. I'm very sorry. I was hoping to be able to give you the closure you deserve. Yes. Get ready, folks, because this case just took an unexpected turn. The real question is, could either the deceased man or his own brother be the father of this child? Seriously? How could Ms. Brogdon have relations with both brothers simultaneously? Now, this might either pique your interest or leave you utterly disgusted. Proving to the deceased man's family that this child belongs to them won't be a walk in the park, that's for sure. Ms. Brogdon, you are in court to prove to Ms. Jones and her daughter that her deceased son Tyrell Jones fathered your one-year-old daughter, Quamira. You say once the DNA proves your case, they need to step up for your baby. Yes, ma'am. Fast forward a bit, and things are getting even more complicated. Mr. Brogdon dropped a bombshell, claiming that Tiona knew Paul wasn't the father, but Tyrell was. However, Tiona insists that Tyrell might be the father. Meanwhile, Tiona is primarily concerned about her family and the turmoil they're enduring due to Timsha's accusations against her brothers. So ultimately, you're saying this has affected your family? Yes, and my brother's living with, he has to live with guilt because of it, you know? Now he has to carry this with him. Because he has guilt because he knows slept he with slept her. with her. Yeah, and it's a possibility, you know, that he could be the father. He was like even upset about trying to take the test. You know, it's too much. 
two women in the courtroom, and they're both losing their minds, shouting at the top of their lungs. Timsha simply wants them to step up and take responsibility for the baby. However, the sister and mother believe it's unfair to put their family through such stress. But let's be real here. That's not a good enough reason to abandon an innocent child. So, Ms. Brogdon, you're saying that Ms. Sugden and Ms. Jones, they didn't know anything throughout the pregnancy. No, they did know something about... You believe they did. did? Yes, they did. I came to the funeral pregnant. I was eight months pregnant. How didn't y'all like, know I was didn't pregnant? Like, you at the I, funeral, Mish. I, I didn't see you. I, probably I came I to your grandmother's house the day that he passed away. She sat at I the table at the repast with the family, pregnant. Yes. Finally, after what feels like an eternity, the results are in. Brace yourselves because Paul is not the father, but Terrell is. Now, here's the real question. Will they embrace this baby as their own niece? Will they find it in their hearts to love and support her? It's their moment to step up and take responsibility to make her an integral part of their family. Mr. Paul Jones is not the father. <laughs> I'm sorry. Which means... I'm sorry. Tyrell Jones is Quamira's biological father. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Step into the gripping tale of Miss Phillips, where a tattoo that once held meaning has transformed into a source of disgust. What led her to despise this man so intensely? Brace yourself as we delve into Ms. Phillips' life and uncover the shocking truth behind her resentment towards Mr. Polk. Ms. Phillips aims to establish Mr. Polk's paternity of their one-month-old daughter. Ms. Phillips, you've opened your case today to prove to Mr. Polk that he is the father of your one-month-old daughter, Promise. You say... After Mr. Polk's initial acceptance of the pregnancy, he has been MIA since your daughter's birth. Is that correct? Could there be a deeper reason behind a man's rejection of his own flesh and blood? Or is he simply lacking responsibility? The judge probes, eager to get straight to the heart of the matter. Did they embark on a romantic journey? Or was it all about immediate gratification? The way Mr. Polk shamelessly admits to his desire for nothing more than physical pleasure is truly disheartening. The first time you got together, when was that? Um, it was back in June in 2017. It wasn't the first time. It was like July 4th. Did you have sex the first time you all got together or did you actually we go did. on dates? We did, we actually did. I'm talking about straight to it. Straight to Cause it. Cause that's all I wanted at the time. Cause that's, that's all. Cause that's all I wanted at the okay, time. Straight to it. Unbelievable. Upon discovering her pregnancy, Ms. Phillips reached out to Mr. Polk only to have him ignore her calls and instead contact the landlord. And to top it off, he has the audacity to claim that Ms. Phillips disrespected him? Even the judge is taken aback by such callousness. His decision to block her number, leaving her feeling discarded, is nothing short of outrejuice. No respect! You the one sleeping with Ms. Phillips! <laughs> Why you got a whole girlfriend? <laughs> Tell him again, yeah. Turner. And then you're not even taking her calls. Yeah. Now I would. I, 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 mean, I, I feel like Miss Phillips. Out. There are some other people he you could have probably called. He was not done with it. He wasn't done with me. Done with me. I wasn't having that. He wasn't done with me. I was done with it at the he same time. Me. The judge snaps Miss Phillips out of her victimizing reverie, reminding her that while Mr. Polk may be toxic and undeserving of her affection, she repeatedly allowed him back into her life. Despite the countless instances of disrespect, he was always just a call away. It's time for her to face her own choices and take responsibility. Because when you downgrade him, you downgrade yourself because you the one laying on your back with your legs open for him every time he calls. <laughs> About the sex the first time it happened like this, you still, you just a snap away. At long last, the truth emerges. Is Mr. Polk the father of this beautiful little girl? The judge advises Ms. Phillips to be wary of Mr. Polk's manipulations and to no longer lend him an ear. Can a man who displays such behavior truly be a suitable father, even if he is biologically connected to promise? Let us ponder this unsettling question. Has been determined by this court. Mr. Polk, you are the father. <laughs> That's your beautiful little girl. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry about the doubt. Well, now that he knows that she is, he needs to help me. A absolutely. Yeah. And okay. more than that. Hold on to your seats, folks. We've got a shocking and downright disgusting case on our hands. Brace yourselves for the jaw-dropping details. Miss Parker claims Mr. Morton is the father of her seven-month-old baby. The twist? She thinks he's shirking his responsibility because his current girlfriend turned him against them. 
Is this the truth or is there another side? Miss Parker, in your suit, you claim Mr. Morton fathered your seven-month-old son, Aaron, while in a relationship with his current girlfriend. Yes, Your Honor. You say the only reason he denies paternity is because his girlfriend turned him against you because she's been unable to conceive a child with him. Yes, Your Honor. Whoa, hold up. Did you just hear that bombshell? Get ready to have your mind blown. The judge asked how Miss Parker and Mr. Morton continued their affair while he was in a committed relationship. Brace yourselves. Miss Parker was involved with both Mr. Morton and his girlfriend, Mrs. Lemon. That's right, folks, a love triangle. So, Miss Parker, how did you end up having sex with Mr. Morton if he has a girlfriend? First of all, Your Honor, that's my baby father. Anytime I want to have sex with him, I'm going to have sex with him. You have a child with Mr. Morton. Yes, I have already. a five year old son. And he's not the child in question. No, Aaron is. But you also still continued a sexual relationship. Yes, with the both of them. Both of them? Yeah. You were having We've sex had with. Sex, I have sex with both of them. With Mr. Morton. And Mrs. Lemon. Things got confusing when Ms. Parker mentioned a previous miscarriage. Here's the scoop. She was married but got pregnant by her boyfriend and had a miscarriage. How does it relate to the current situation? The judge had to dig deep to make a fair decision. Talk about a complex web of relationships. You were pregnant, before, but like this was before though. This is before I got pregnant he was again. Only up You're wrong. He wasn't even something. away when I was pregnant. He was with me. So the bottom when line I was is pregnant, you were in fact we were together, pregnant by your by boyfriend. Him. Yes, I was. But you miscarried. But I miscarried. I was pregnant by my boyfriend, right. yes, but I had a miscarriage. Exactly. Subsequently, I got back in a sexual relationship with Mr. Morton, had exactly. unprotected sex, and I was pregnant again. Yes, Your Honor. That's what I wanted to understand. Yes. Now, let's delve into Mr. Morton's disbelief. When Miss Parker revealed her pregnancy at eight weeks, he didn't buy it. Could it be because of her previous pregnancy? The judge questioned his doubts. And guess what? He still had them. Was this the reason for his lack of involvement during the pregnancy? The plot thickens. How many weeks? Eight weeks pregnant. You're eight weeks. I was eight weeks pregnant when I got that sonogram and I gave, I went home and I gave him the sonogram to let him know. What was your response, Mr. Morton, when she told you we have a baby on the way, they miscalculated my due date, and now I really believe it's your child? What was your response? I had my doubts because of she what she had told me. You still had me. doubts. Did you participate? You have a child with her already. Did you yes. participate in the birth? Did, were you were you there through the pregnancy? I didn't were go you... to none of the appointments. I ain't show up to none of the, the doctor's well, appointments, a, but I, I was there with him. He He's talking about Aaron. I have a picture of him holding my son when he first came out. Roman, may I see that, please? Hold on a minute. Did Mr. Morton really let his girlfriend disrespect his mother? Unbelievable, right? Was it manipulation, or does he think his mother deserves disrespect? Regardless, interrupting others while they're talking is never okay. And seriously, using his mother's lack of involvement as an excuse for disrespect? Weak argument. She did not have anything because we were supposed to try to get together a baby shower. So she did have him early. So as far as support system, it was me and my daughter, which is Eric's sister. And Mr. Mother. Morton's sister. And her mother. And excuse me, I'm talking. It don't matter. It does. It don't. So therefore... Did you uh -oh. just let her disrespect your mother? Yeah, real bad. I'm yeah. sorry, I had to catch that. Drum roll, please. The moment we've all been waiting for. The results. Mr. Morton is confirmed as the father of Ms. Phillips' baby. He'll need to pay half the expenses incurred so far, totaling 99350 Now, here's the big question. Is that enough? Shouldn't a father be actively involved instead of trying to escape? Food for thought, my friends. You are Aaron's father. Thank you. I told you. Like, I'm not no... Come on. <laughs> Miss Parker, you came to court with a suit in the amount of $2,047. Mr. Morton is, in fact, baby Aaron's biological father, which means you are legally obligated to care for that child, and Miss Parker is entitled to half of the child care expenses she has incurred thus far. You admit you contributed $30, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. You came in suing for $2,047. Half of that is $1,023.50, less the $30 you contributed. So therefore, my ruling is for the plaintiff in the amount of $993.50, is that clear? Yes, yes ma'am. Must to see, that's all I got. It's one must to see about this little girl right here. But I tell you this right now, I hope to God this is my child. You know, my grandparents said anything. I just want to make, make sure that this is my family. I just want to know where I come from. Can you still just be my dad? <laughs> 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 
Yes. A heartfelt quest for closure that's been decades in the making. Yep, this plaintiff was tired of all the lies and this journey in search of her real father. She wanted some answers, and today, she was about to meet a man who could be her potential father. And then you grew up believing one man was your father until the age of 13 when he said, I am not your daddy. Yes, ma'am. Your mother then told you on her deathbed that another man, the defendant, David Dorsey, is your biological father. A stunning deathbed confession led Ms. Hannon on a quest of a lifetime. She had heard of Mr. Dorsey in the past, but never laid eyes on him until now. All this time, she believed another to be the father, but he shut that down cruelly. Well, I believe David Dorsey is my biological father, but I grew up with my grandparents and my mom. I called him one day for the daddy-daughter dance, and instead of his response being, yes, I'll be there, it was, your mother's still lying to you not your dad, you need to go find your real dad. So just before your mother passed, she says to you, I thought I picked the right one for you, but David Dorsey is really your biological father. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Dorsey graced the court with his presence, finally. However, he walked right past the potential daughter without a second glance. Yep, the judge saw it, but what he revealed next took the cake in being one of the shocking revelations. She's been told that you are her biological father. You don't believe you're her biological father? Not really. No, Your Honor. Why? Because I don't remember a mother at all. Miss Hannon, do you have a picture of your mother with you? Yes, ma'am. Do you remember that woman? No, ma'am. Let's take a minute to soak in the sheer, unadulterated bizarrity of this situation. I mean, seriously, Mr. Dorsey denied having any contact with Miss Veronica, ever, even after the witness from the plaintiff's side recognized him. Yeah, he still held his ground. I knew that he worked at a fast food restaurant. He was a manager at a fast food restaurant from her and... Mr. Dorsey, her. were you a manager at a fast food restaurant? No, ma'am, but I worked at a fast food restaurant. Mr. Dorsey, I have seen him come to the job to bring her mom. Your Honor, you I, don't remember any Your of Honor, this. I've never had sex with this woman. Well, folks, if you thought that was the end of it, you were sorely mistaken. Mr. Dorsey had a different last name in the past. And no, he didn't reveal that information. The godmother did that. But he accepted that chunk of information. And yet, he still maintained he didn't know the baby mama. Oh my God, the level of denial here. Wait, but this it was is David, David Dorsey. You said David Watkins. It was a David Watkins. My name Watkins. used to be David Watkins. I was adopted and he changed my name to Watkins. And then when I got grown, I changed my name back to my dad's name. Miss Hannon has been called your daughter's name. She resembles my daughter. Oh, you, you admit she resembles your daughter? When she was younger, yes. She remembers the woman talking about you and saying it was David Dorsey or David Watkins. Yes, ma'am. I don't know her mother. Next up, we get to hear from Mr. Dorsey's daughter. And the moment she entered, she made a beeline for the plaintiff and hugged her. It was a beautiful moment, made even more when she immediately testified she was there to bring her sister home. Furthermore, she revealed the true character of her father's dearest and his days in the past. You know we are here discussing the paternity as it relates to Ms. Hannon. Yes, I'm here to claim my sister. That's my sister. I don't mean to disrespect my dad, but my dad was a Rolling Stone. I'm, like I said, I'm just here for my dad to get clarification on his own, but that is my sister. So you feel like you have no doubts? No doubts. Poor Ms. Hannon was truly torn over all this. On one side, she had a woman claiming her as her sister, while on the other side, a potential father was playing the Never Have I Ever game on expert mode. Talk about being in between a rock and a hard place, right? He says he doesn't remember, but who all remembers every white night stand I didn't have when they was a kid? Hey, maybe he don't remember that fling. He just wasn't doesn't the best remember fling. that. Like, it just might have not been the best for him. He didn't remember it. I'm sorry. I just I'm, I, I don't remember having sex with your mom. I'm sorry. That's fine. <laughs> what was it that made you want to come today? I mean, if you've never met this woman and you have never had sex with her and you don't know what is going on, why did you come? I want closure for filing. The moment of truth was here. It was time to cut through the drama and get to the envelope that held the facts. We're about to lay down the verdict that'll either grant our plaintiff the closure she's been craving or leave us all scratching our heads in disbelief. Here we go. Mr. Dorsey, you are not the father. Can you still just be my dad? <laughs> <laughs> Yes. And I can be a sister. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it was a real life Who's the Daddy wedding special edition. The plaintiff had not one, but two potential candidates for the role of dad in her life, and she wanted to find out the truth. The defendants, however, were ready to fight. Otherwise, Miss Kelly, you are here to determine if one of two men we've tested for paternity is your biological father. 
You hope to leave this courtroom today knowing your father's identity so he can walk you down the aisle at your wedding. Yes, Your Honor. Moving on, Miss Kelly took us along her journey of finding out the truth. After a rough teenage years, she got to meet these possible fathers. While one of them was distant, Mr. Duncan thought well commit her as his nice gesture, but he still had his doubts based upon the circumstance in which he met the baby mama. And so, Mr. Duncan, when you were contacted, were you surprised in disbelief? What were your thoughts? Oh, I was happy. I was proud. She yeah. was in a relationship with somebody else and even living with them. Yes, Your Honor. But she was dating you on the side. Yes, Your Honor. And you wanted her to be with you. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Mommy dearest, the perpetrator in all of this, came out with her truth. She did cherish her daughter and wanted her to find closure. As she was the one paying for her mistakes in the past, they both wanted Mr. Duncan to be their guy. But there was still a 50-50 chance of it going sideways. And like I said, I was young when I had her and I made some mistakes, and my mom wound up wanting to step to the plate and raise her. Mr. Duncan's always accepted her. The ex, it's just, when I told him I was pregnant and everything, it was just sort of just, ugh, he didn't care. I want closure for her. She's been through enough in her life, and yes. it's time she gets her closure. Next up, the baby daddy stated his case. It seemed after having a row of words with the father of the baby mama, the defendant ended up taking them in. Though he accepted Ms. Destiny as his, the people certainly didn't make it easier. Nuh uh. What I want to understand is when you decided to take her in and say they could come live with you, what were you thinking? It might come out today that she ain't my child because all them years people would say, uh, that ain't your child. She said, that ain't, that ain't your child. But deep in my heart, every time they would say that, it's like somebody jugging me. Never once, not even one time, did I ever turn my back on that child. I always knew that this little girl right now was mine. By the looks of it, it wasn't just the people who were giving the baby daddy trouble. The mommy dearest was a whole other trouble as well. Yep, the living arrangement didn't last long after that, and Mr. Duncan lost touch with the plaintiff. Do you ever recall her telling you directly? Yes, that's your not Honor. your yes, child. Yes, Your Honor, I do recall her what happened? me through my face, and uh, I knew that uh, she could be telling the truth. She said that's not your child, even though she told you to your face. Destiny may not be yours. You had the doubt, but you still were hoping. Should I start trouble or should I just love her from afar? Hold on to your hats, people, because Ms. Kelly's journey isn't over yet. Not at all, as Mr. Anothony, the other potential baby daddy, was still very much in the picture. Now the daughter had an encounter with him as well, but it wasn't pleasant by the sound of it. Let's see. Do you remember the relationship with Mr. Anthony? Yes, Your Honor, it was not even what you want to call a relationship. It was a two-minute thing. We never seen each other again or nothing. So it was more of a one-night stand? Yeah, pretty much. And so when you found out you were pregnant, did you ever tell him right from no, the beginning? because I think I was already pregnant when that occurred. Now the question was what were the hopes of these guys from today's results? The daughter hoped for a real father so that he could finally meet his grandkids. Such a sweet sentiment. Though Mr. Anthony was initially shocked, the question was now nagging at him as he had been in the dark for so many years. True that. So Destiny, what are your hopes today? I hope to find out that one of these two is the father. And what are your hopes today, Mr. Duncan? I knew that one day that all oh, this might, and I'm glad that it is. I hope that that must have seed that I got. Miss Kelly, what are your hopes? Deep down inside, I'll be glad when results are revealed, and I pray that Charlie is her father. All the pieces of this paternity puzzle were finally about to fall into place. The grand reveal was here. Let's see whether Miss Kelly gets to have a father to walk her down the aisle or not. Here we go. When it comes to Destiny Kelly, Mr. Anthony is not her father. Mr. Duncan, you are not her father. Miss Kelly, how are you feeling? I'm just confused and anxious to find out who it is. Any man should feel blessed and honored to have you as their daughter. We'll be back. <laughs> Absolutely. This was a sizzling story of love, betrayal, and baby daddy drama. The plaintiff claimed the baby daddy was okay with their first child, yet the second one was denied fatherly treatment. The defendant, on the other hand, claimed it to be just another ploy to entrap him. You claim he needs to step up once you prove that he is Paris's father. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Johnson, you testify that the plaintiff is a liar and a cheater who knows you are not her child's father, 
and that this is just a ploy to keep you in her life. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Following that train of thought, the baby daddy came up with his testimony. It seemed Ms. Amos had trouble being in a committed relationship. The good old concept of loyalty was lost on this baby mama. I done seen text messages in her phone from other guys saying, is you coming with me again tonight? I enjoyed myself. His name saved under a female name. So are you all in a relationship? Not at the moment. But at the time Paris was conceived, you were? Yes. Now, Ms. Amos, you were supposed to be in a relationship with Mr. Johnson. That's correct. You find out you're pregnant, and then what happens? You tell him? Yes, yes, ma'am. Next up, the baby mama tried to justify her promiscuous behavior by blaming the defendant as he started it. She was just reacting to his actions, apparently. Well, the tit-for-tat game was displaying drastic consequences now. So as I walked out the bathroom, he was laying on the couch. You know, I went up to him, I showed him the pregnancy test. He looked at me, and he was like, it ain't mine. Instantly. Because she's a cheater. <laughs> you a cheater. You playing the tit for tat game, he's doing it so I can do it too. And you are having sex with somebody else during the time when you're having sex with Mr. Johnson. I was. Time to go on a long rant. The plaintiff admitted to messing around right in the middle of this court, and yet she was firm on the belief that the defendant was her baby daddy, and he was obviously not buying that. Why are you so sure Mr. Johnson is Paris's biological father when you are admitting in court right now that I was sleeping with somebody else three or four times a week. I mean, me and the other guy, we we had unprotected sex, but, you know, majority of the time we was, you know, using, you know, a, uh, you know... A condom? Yes, ma'am. The plot thickened. The other guy was still in the dark about baby Paris's existence. Wow, Miss Amos was good at keeping secrets. This was interesting since the witness she brought also just got to know about certain developments in the past. So to this day, that guy has no clue... He don't even know Paris exists. Do you think your cousin, Mr. Johnson is Paris's biological father. Absolutely. She looks just like his other two kids. So you have no doubt. The information that she gave today, that was new to me. So, of course, you know what I'm saying? She looks just like the oh, other. Oh, you got some new info today, too. Fasten your seatbelts, people. As baby mama was about to take us on a wild ride, the court was in session for baby Paris's paternity. But after hearing the witness's testimony from the defendants, uh-oh, more trouble was ahead of the baby mama then. She told me her own mouth, this is not your brother's baby. I told him he can go on. So, see, the thing... When did she tell you that? When she was pregnant. That's not his baby. She said it herself, so... There are, like, one million other things you could say. Exactly. exactly. But why say that? I and mean, then turn around the next day and want to go, no, it is your baby and you should believe me. They're done! The baby mama had been quite a busy bee during both of her pregnancies, it seemed. Yep, but now everything was out in the open and it wasn't being received well. Most importantly, Ms. Amos's case was weakening by the second. So you were having sex with somebody else. I was. During the time you found out you were pregnant with London. I was. And there is a paternity question surrounding that child as well. Correct. Is it the same man you were sleeping with during the time Paris was conceived? No. So it's a different guy? Yes. Poor Mr. Johnson. He was clearly having a hard time. This evil deception left him speechless. Here he was having doubts over one kid. Turns out that the kid he was sure about was also doubtful. That was quite harsh. I kind of feel hurt. You say you feel hurt? Mm-hmm. Because you felt like what? The day with my baby, and I didn't feel like she was cheating at the time with London. So at that time, you really had no real clues that she was sleeping with anybody else. That's right. Dear Lord, woman, take some pity on the baby daddy. It seemed the plaintiff didn't have a one-time thing with the other guy. Nope, it was more. And it continued till the second baby even. Mr. Johnson was definitely in a world of pain over this. It was pretty much a relationship. Yes. That you were having outside of the relationship you had with Mr. Johnson. Yes, I've been actually knowing him before I met him. Has this other person, has he ever met London? Yeah. He met her. When's the last time you were intimate with that man? Maybe around two months ago. It was time to end this paternity saga of betrayal and heartache. Mr. Johnson was here for some answers, and Judge Lake had those for him. Paris and London, both babies' lives were at stake here. Here we go. Mr. Johnson, you are the father. <laughs> both of those beautiful little babies are yours. <laughs> a family on the brink of being broken. In a desperate attempt, the husband brought his wife to court in the hopes of saving his family. On the other hand, the baby mama wasn't so sure about the plaintiff's claim. You claim you have loved and taken care of baby Noah since the day he was born. 
Ms. McElhone, you say you are convinced your son Noah was conceived during a brief sexual encounter while you and Mr. Tisdale were separated. You believe your son deserves to know his real father. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. By the looks of it, the marriage was already on a rocky road, so much so that these guys separated officially, and then the wife's dalliance began with the other guy. Well, she sure moved on fast, but that speed led them straight to the paternity court. We separated officially in April. And then what happened? Um, I met Mr. Revere. So take me to the day you found out Ms. McElhone was pregnant. I don't remember exactly what the date was. I uh, What was the date? August 21st is the day I took the test and it came out positive. Next up, Mr. Tisdale came prepared with a calendar. Now this calendar held a wealth of information. All the times these guys did the hanky-panky during separation. Furthermore, the husband recalled the time Ms. McElhone ended up crushing his heart. When we were split up, and back together. All right. And when we were having sex, and then obviously it says we're... When did the doubt happen, and why? How? We got into a, a little bit of an argument. Um, I don't know what it was about. She said that I might not be the father, that someone else might be the father. The baby daddy already had a boat established with baby Noah. Clearly, a lot was on the line for him. The other guy threatened to unravel that bond and everything. The defendant wanted their bond to continue flourishing. Well, we see how that goes. Would this be the guy when you broke up with him and went off with that guy? Yes, Your Honor. You thought he could be the child's biological father? Yes, Your Honor. In reality, deep down inside, I do want him to be Mark's father. And you truly love Noah. Oh, yeah. I can see that. All my heart. It was time to bring the other guy into the courtroom. He had a much bigger role in this story than anticipated. Moreover, he had quite a few revelations when he narrated the incident of how he got the news of pregnancy. Poor Mr. Tisdale didn't see this blow coming. She went to the store to get like a pregnancy test and she went back home and used it and it came out negative and then she threw it away but something in my head told me to go pick it back up and it was positive. Mr. Tisdale, did you know they were together when she found out she was pregnant? No. Why was he there when you took a test? Me and Mr. Rivera used to hang out occasionally. Hang out? Yes. Next up, we saw one crushing blow after another in the courtroom. Mr. Revere was full of shocking things to say about the baby mama, and all this news was taking a heavy toll on the baby daddy. He was beyond miserable at this point. When's the last time you were intimate with Ms. McElhone? Um, the night we flew a plane to here on oh. Tuesday night. Ever since June 1st, within those three weeks, like almost every night we had, we were intimate. So you mean when she brought Noah to see the her family? She was, even Noah wasn't even at her family's. He was at my house too. Mr. Revere seemed pretty confident about his testimony, even though the baby mama was denying it left and right. And when I say this testimony was enlightening, you better believe me. Baby Noah was also named by this dude apparently. With Who Mark. do you want to be in a relationship with? With Mark. So what is she telling you? Miss McElhone, have you been having a sexual relationship with Mr. Revere? Absolutely not, Your Honor. Moving on, Mr. Revere came prepared. He was so sure that he administered a lie detector test upon himself. And he did all this to prove he said nothing but the truth in this court. Well, the results of those tests were in as well. Let's hear it. This was one cunning baby mama. Got back together with her fiance, Mark Tisdale, last year. Have you had sexual intercourse with her? You said yes. The lie detector determined you were being truthful. Ms. McElhone indeed had a lot of nerve, man. Like, seriously. And she showed no remorse. While Mr. Tisdale was broken beside him, she played him like a fiddle when he was at her beck and call the entire pregnancy. Harsh with a capital H. Ms. McElhone. You just gave birth. They just sold you up. Just like you couldn't get enough of me. Every night you yeah. cheated on me. Maybe that's probably why, I, in reality, Is that I'm why you cheated on me with him? Because he cheated on you with somebody else? I don't understand why you have such disdain for Mr. Revere, but you're still sleeping with him all the time. Poor Mr. Tisdale had enough torment in one day. The ugly truth came out, and it was devastating for these guys. But the baby Noah's fate was still on the line. He was waiting for a father, so let's give him one. The biological father is Mr. Revere. Mr. Tisdale, I'm very sorry. Do you have any words to describe what you're feeling in this moment? I'm sorry. You ain't never gonna change. I mean, you could say otherwise, but I, I am. The defendant has been harboring paternity doubts since she was practically a kindergartner, like five years old. Yep, she was that little when she got swept into this paternity saga. But now, the plaintiffs regretted their actions and wanted to prove to her that he was indeed her father. Mr. Taylor, you claim that you've always believed and never doubted that the defendant, Jasmine Taylor, is your biological daughter. Yes, Your Honor. 
Ms. Taylor, your daughter heard those words and believes Mr. Taylor is not her father. Is that correct? That is correct. The seed of doubt took root, and it got deeper in the last 20 years. The daughter wanted answers now, but Mr. and Mrs. Taylor were knee-deep in regret. Well, when you end up ringing that bell, it's hard to go back from there then. Now they were definitely facing the music. I made a mistake. I said something to that Spike because he no longer wanted to be with me. Her relationship with somebody else, I had sex with him one time. You don't believe Mr. Taylor is your biological father? Yes, ma'am. Can you explain that to the court? Well, when I was younger, like around the age five, you know, my parents, they had got into an argument and I overheard it about her, my mother saying that, oh, well, that's not your daughter anyway. Buckle up, people, because we are about to dive headfirst into the nitty gritty of this roller coaster of a relationship. Ms. Aris shared her version of the time they first met and started having fun. But as it turned out, mommy was having the best of both worlds, apparently. Let's see. A guy that one of my girlfriends introduced me to, because I thought I was going to get into the, you know, letting him come around, chill out, wasn't having sex with him or anything, but he was giving me money like three and $400 a week. Bottom line is you were in a relationship with Mr. Taylor, mm -hmm. dating, mm -hmm. but you met this guy who was whining, kind of whining and dining you and, yeah. and, and trying to take care of you. Moving on, it was only fair that Mr. Dallas got to state his case too. While the baby mama was having fun, he thought he was in a committed relationship. Mrs. Taylor sure knew how to make a mess of things, though she said she was 5% in doubt. We know that's enough to cause a paternity ruckus, and Tata, it did. Because I'm not sure when I got pregnant. So the bottom line is you were kind of in this relationship, but still entertaining this other guy because you all were in a long distance relationship. Yes. Time to drop some truth bombs on the potential father and the daughter. Yep, Miss Aries laid it all out for these guys. It seemed she did take the other baby daddy in the loop as well as took a surprise visit, which the father-daughter duo had no idea about. Till now, of course. This baby could be yours, but my real boyfriend is coming back to get me and I want to go with him. Yes. You did. And what was his response? He said, well, I want to see her. Mr. Taylor, around nine months, Miss Taylor says they went back up to Jersey and she let the other guy see Jasmine. Do you know that? I never knew that. Truth time was continuing in the paternity court. Oh yeah, the baby daddy initially didn't think of him not being the father a big deal. However, that certainly didn't remain the case when he got to know the real reason. Well, at that time, when she told me that, you know, that I may not be the father, it wasn't that big of a deal to me. The only thing that makes somebody care in that situation is money. Taylor, so up until this argument, this time when you heard this phone call, your mom maintained that Mr. Taylor was your biological father. Yes. Well, the child support news ended up breaking Ms. Jasmine, understandably so, saw it coming a mile away, but most importantly, she had to understand one important detail of her birth certificate, and that's where Judge Lake came in. She made the defendant understand what was going on that the parents failed to comprehend. He didn't want her to uh, put him on child support because she said I wasn't his, so... So you oh, treat me. Take a break. But the bottom line is what he doesn't understand is he should be paying child That's support. Because you, legally, you're but, my father because you're on a birth certificate. And thank so you. it doesn't even matter. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Poor Ms. Jasmine couldn't catch a break. She contacted the other potential baby daddy, but encountered nothing but radio silence from there. Yeah, the guy pulled that stunt. That ended up devastating her more as all she ever wanted was to know where she belonged. She wasn't asking for a lot here, folks. You had his name. Mm-hmm. Where'd you get it from? Oh, my mom. So you, she gave you the name? Yeah. And then you went on Facebook and found him? Mm-hmm. Send him a message? Yeah, I sent him a message. And he responded back. What did he say? He didn't respond. He blocked me. All of this took a toll on this whole family here. There were tears and cries, and all three of them. Moreover, Mr. Dallas had a heartfelt moment with the daughter, and he poured his heart out. Yep, yeah, come on, people. Let those emotions out. Ain't no use keeping them hidden in this court right. This paternity doubt has really destroyed your relationship. And I probably just didn't even want to even discuss it. At that. You know, this didn't matter about that to me. But I understand how it affected you for the fact that, you know, if I come and take your sister and don't take you. The tension was palpable. The emotions were running high. Every eye was on that envelope in the judge's hand. Whether the results would finally clear up the paternity doubt once and for all, or Ms. Jasmine was in for a world of more pain. We are about to find out. Mr. Taylor, you are not the father. Oh, God. I'm so sorry. Oh. <laughs> what kind of craziness is this? 
right? So basically, you're admitting that you just lying. How did you see her messages? You looked through her phone. I looked through her phone. And you could see it all there. I can't trust her. No one's yelling at you and screaming, and you're no good, and I don't want nothing to do with you anymore. You got a beautiful little girl that just ran into your arms. Mm. Accept that and roll with that. Living a lie, quenching for peace, the man had enough of his spouse's cheating. He arrived in the court with evidence of unmasking his slattern wife. So now he wanted DNA to end this paternity drama once and for all. Let's hear how he has been holding up. So you can prove you are not the father of four-month-old baby Charles. You say your one-year marriage to the defendant is on the verge of collapse because of paternity doubt, and you need this test to save your family. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. As you can see, Mommy's infidelity had brought them on the verge of falling apart. He claimed that his concrete evidence made him doubt the paternity, yet he signed the birth certificate. But once it is proven he was not the father, then it would be over for good. You're on the birth certificate. Yes, I am. You are this child's legal father. Yes, yes, I am. But you need this test so desperately because if you are not the biological father of this child, you want to have your name removed from this birth certificate. Correct. Okay, you heard the defendant. Their relationship went to the wishy-washy road real quick when their neighbors blurted out that Mr. Broussard was not the father of the baby. She claimed that her spouse was obsessed with her ex and was just making things up. He is so obsessed with my ex that he feels that I'm cheating on him every time I do something. How long has it been this way? Since the end of last year. There has been rumors going around in the neighborhood that we grew up that he is not the father of our child. However, the man believed the rumors because they all came up with some evidence. So to support his claims, he brought an exhibit. But the bummer was with every assertion baby mama was getting trapped in her lies like this. They want to have a family, a baby together. They about to push you out the picture. What? Yeah, it blew my mind. So. Well, see, that's the thing about kids, though. They'll tell it, honey. And so you heard that she was still talking to the ex and they was gonna push you out the picture. And have a family. And hand have a family. Oh, no. It was just compulsive lying. Now she could not even blame the daddy for his doubts. But this was not over yet. The further unmasking, the lies game got stronger as baby daddy revealed the mommy's lies like this. Miss Broussard, did your ex send you a naked photo? Yes, he did. And you don't tell him, don't do that? I do, but he's gonna do it anyways because he, like I said... And you don't block his off. number? <laughs> no. Even though her cheating was not hidden anymore yet, she continued sleeping around with her ex as the defendant saw handprints of another man all over her body and she admitted that it was revenge sex. Oh, my! So you admitted to your husband that you had slept with your ex in your house? Yeah. And you don't have no shame in it, huh? But I slept with him after his ex called me telling me that they were having an affair, too. Oh, so the revenge sex. Yes. Uff, F, this woman got some nerve. Instead of being ashamed of her wrongdoings and lies, she was defending herself. Anyways, Judge Lake heard enough of their testimony, so she determined that DNA was vehement in this paternity conflict. So let's get those results and see if they ended up on good terms or not. In the case of Broussard versus Broussard, when it comes to four-month-old Charles Broussard, it has been determined by this court Mr. Broussard, you are the father. This case was outright palooza, as Mr. Hammond claimed that his debauched spouse had imperiled their marriage with compulsive lies. He claimed that baby mama was busy with another when she conceived the baby. Mrs. Hammond, you claimed that after 10 years of marriage and repeated attempts to get pregnant, a month ago, you finally gave birth to your miracle baby, Isaac. You need today's result to prove to the defendant, your husband, that this is his baby. Is this correct? Yes, Your Honor. Initially, the defendant shed light on the habitual lying part. He claimed that his spouse had numerous guys in her life. She had a habit of manipulating people. Even she had made him a fool in their whole marriage of 11 years. But now it's time to show that's enough. She's had multiple partners and um, she, she lies to my face constantly. So you say she lies to you all, all the, time. the time? All the time. So the marriage has come to this? I can only be the fool. It turned out that Mrs. Hammond's promiscuity was at the peak that even her lovers gave the red flag to the defendant and dropped him a video of them banging his wife. But Mommy tried to wipe it like this. What did they tell you? What happened? 
I've, I've seen a video of my wife giving oral <laughs> to, to another man. That is such a lie. There is no video, Your Honor. There is no video. But was there a man and was there oral sex? In, in all honesty, um, there has been cheating on both sides. My husband cheated on me first. I took it the wrong way. About a year after that happened, I did end up, I, I've cheated on him. So to prove his claims, the potential daddy brought evidence, which alleged that Mr. Hammond caught his wife texting another, which raged him, and he ended up posting something on Facebook. Ooh, that should not be posted on social media. It's what exactly? <sighs> it's um, conversations with my wife and another man that, that, that should not be spoken. And, um, oh, oh. She's in the same place as th this man is, you know what I mean? And, um, and you posted these to your social media? Correct. However, the plaintiff was consistently lying. She contended that there was nothing true in those text messages because it was one of her friends. But this time, Jude Lake jumped, cut her chase off, and did not let her nincompoop her like this. You saw this man? Um, yes, I did. I met him at our local county park, um, said hello to him. It was a friend that we had both worked with. It ain't that many kissy faces in the world right. that you got to type after you meet a co-worker at the park. Mm -hmm. This is more than that. Now, whether you slept with this person, I don't know. Moreover, it was slipped that the woman had numerous other people in this paternity run, as she had been moving around with a single status that even claiming to be married shocked Mr. Hammond. You believe that this person could be Isaac's biological Correct. father? Yes, ma'am, and uh, numerous others. I mean, there's she's moved so single, I, I don't understand how she claims to be a married woman. One after another, mommy's lies were being caught, so Judge Lauren jumped into the birthday party. It was disclosed that the man did not help her even when she was about to give birth. He abandoned her and went to the casino with another woman. He, um, I said, okay, are you gonna bring me to the hospital? He said, no, drive yourself. He left me at my house. He left and went to the casino with another woman. He didn't show back up to the hospital until 20 minutes before I gave birth. Um, stayed for about maybe 45 minutes and he left again. I didn't see him until the next day. But the husband denied the claims and stated there were no other women with him because he went to gamble only. Ugh! This weird part triggered Judge Lake, so she reacted like this. I was at the casino gambling. I wasn't with another woman. Well, why were you at the casino gambling if your wife's giving birth That's a good to question. the baby you prayed for? Right. I, I, can't, I can't have an answer for that one because I don't know. What kind of craziness is this? Right? Apparently, mommy was trollop and her unfaithfulness had made things go south. Still, the potential dad claimed that his spouse cheated on him with multiple men, even if it could be 13, 16 or more, because mama lied and swindled a lot. Mrs. Hammond, how many times have you cheated? I've been with three other people. I, I know at least six that, that, that she's been with. Oh. He, he believes that's so many I believe people. you've been with more than six. I believe you've been with 13. But then again, he... 16. Oh. Even though Miss Hammond's cheating had left her marriage at a vulnerable point, the only way to determine the truth about the baby was to uncover the secret DNA envelope was holding. So let's get those results. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Hammond, you are the father. <laughs> What would you do if you see a girl wearing tight pants? Would you slide into her bed by selling dreams of wedding bells as the man did in this case? Mr. Wiggins rolled up in the court seeking Judge Lake's help to get back his family. Let's hear what brought him into this mess. Mr. Wiggins, you are here in court to prove that you are not the father of Ms. Davis's child, Aubrey Wiggins, and say today's results will change your life. Being alleged the father of Aubrey, I lost my wife and I want to regain my family. You lost your family? You were married at the time? Explain. Yes, Your Honor, I was married. Me and my wife went through a separation due to a rough patch. Wow, a brief separation gave him the pass of sleeping with another woman. It turned out that in no time he was up to jiggery pokery with Miss Davis, yet he wanted to free himself from accusations of being a father to a baby girl because his family was at stake. Almost yeah. two and a half years? Yes, sir. Yes, I was yeah. married, Your Honor. I mean... Yeah, married, we, but... It just, you know, it kind of went longer than it should have. But your hope is that if you can prove that Aubrey is not your biological child, that you can convince your ex-wife, which is you know, the woman, I guess she left because of this situation? Yes, ma'am. Further, the defendant claimed that they were in a committed relationship for two years, and the man admitted to manipulating and lying to this young lady for his gain. Yet blaming her was the reason he lost track of his family. Oh my, what type of man is he? I knew I was in a relationship. You did? Two and a half we years we was together. No. And to you might have gotten more than you bargained right. for, right? He did, he did, a child. And so why did you think you were in a relationship, Ms. Davis? He stated that multiple did you, times. Was he telling you there was gonna be a future? Yes. 
Oh. He wanted to marry me. He wanted to get a divorce from his wife. No, he wanted you're to be on with it. me. No, you're on. Next, Judge Lake hopped into the pregnancy. It slipped out that Mr. Wiggins' mistress wanted his wife out of his life because she expected to have her whole life with him. So put on his deception hat and duped baby mama like this. Right. I wanted more because you that's what you presented. And I was good to her. I mean, because ultimately I was trying to get something out of her. Two and a half years, how we're not together. Things happen or said in the bedroom that may not always be saying. Uh, so basically you're admitting that you just lying. However, he asserted that Miss Davis approached his wife on Facebook and disrupted his married life. Oh man, are you out of your mind? I mean, he has no control over his desires and yet inoculated the defendant for the havoc? That just makes no sense. Miss Davis told her that she was pregnant and that she wasn't going anywhere. Did it cause the havoc or did you cause the havoc? He did, because... Right. Oh, I ain't going nowhere. Right, because you, know, was you this, lay down with this me. Position, you was, this position that, that's that, your, that's I, your I've father, got you now. So you know I've got it. you now. And that's the demeanor I felt she had. Okay, so the next Chronicles of Wiggins started. He claimed that the mommy had been busy with another man at the time she conceived the baby because he sent some text messages on her phone. So that's why he was denying paternity. We got into a bit of an altercation. I don't remember the exact details. And my family member seen her be picked up by another guy. That was my cousin. That I she claims to be her cousin. And this guy inboxes about meeting her again, and she's telling him, oh, I need some more I never loving. Slept with him, so to me. To prove his sham show right, the alleged father brought an exhibit to the court. He alleged that Miss Davis had fabricated his name on the birth certificate, but how she forged his name was quite interesting. Duh. But the baby's mom wiped off all his lies like this. This is the birth, the birth date that's listed on Aubrey's birth certificate. My birthday is November the 9th, 1990. The one this you wrote. This says 11, 11, 1990. I didn't wrote. write anything. No, when I when, when I seen it, when we got the birth certificate, I let him know that he, whatever he signed, he signed it wrong. Till now, it was apparent Mr. Wiggin was a compulsive liar who was putting on sham allegations about baby mama, and he was clowning just to defend himself. Further, it came out that they were still sleeping together, and it ticked Judge Lake, so she articulated the reality like this. Still involved no yes. we're not your honor when was the last time you two were intimate it's been a while last night no you did not use protection the no. last time we had in the course we did not use protection have you learned anything i have not to be with someone like that no you're still with them I, what? and you just might give it to her right. i won't with your lying self yeah, Judge Lake was right. He was playing on both sides of the fence, yet contended that he wanted to get back his family. However, their back and forth did not help and made things more complicated, so the last hope to get closure was to reveal the DNA results. Mr. Wiggins, you are the father. <laughs> Ms. Davis, what are you feeling? I've been going through this for a long time, like between him and his wife, like. It's his child. Right. You are the father. Never let anyone take your absence for granted, or it may trap you in the paternity muddle. Mr. Talon addressed Miss Jackson in front of Judge Lauren to settle down the heated mess. He claimed that the defendant had made him a buffoon as she was pregnant with someone else's baby, and he was unaware till nine months. You say your fiance, Miss Jackson, dropped a bombshell on you when she was nine months pregnant and told you that you may not be her child's father. Yes, y'all. She later changed her mind and said, you are Raymond's father. Yes, Sean. The trial began with the deceiving saga. It turned out that the plaintiff turned on ghost mode, abandoned his family, and went to another city to pursue his career. Mommy claimed that she buzzed him on the phone, but he turned his back on her. Dude, then why play the victim card? I met Mr. Green in a shelter, and we, we ended up becoming intimate, but Mr. Taylor left me and my children I'm stranded in Florida. It was my girlfriend and our kids in a shelter. I couldn't do nothing there because it was no job opportunities in Orlando. He the didn't try to get in contact with at, me. At the youth I shelter. I tried to get in contact with him. I didn't even know that he was in Atlanta for two days. It turned out that when Mr. came back in the picture, the woman was already having hanky-panky with another man. But Mama shed light on the truth. She said that Daddy never looked back to his family. So to find comfort, she brought another man in the picture. I had no one to turn to but Mr. Green. Mr. Green was the person that was and what there Mr. for Mr. Green did for he, you. Mr. Taylor didn't send kids. any money. Let me hear 
hear you one at a time because I want to understand this. This supposed job opportunity that he had, during this job opportunity, he never sent me or the kids any money. There was no one for me to turn to but Mr. Green. He was the person there for me, giving me emotional support. Further, Mr. Taylor alleged that the defendant got intimate with the other man right after he left. That precipitated the bickering in the court because no one was ready to drop their allegation. But the defendant buckled up and advocated that they would have been in paternity court if the man had used his mind. <laughs> After Mr. Taylor left for Atlanta, did you turn to Mr. Green? A few weeks. Three days later, she was pregnant by October 12th. I left September 14th. If he would have never left us there in the first place, this whole situation could have been avoided. If he would have just been a man about the situation. The next plaintiff stated the facts that intervened in his doubts about the baby boy. It slipped out that he was unaware that his girlfriend had conceived another man's child until an anonymous person hit him up and dropped the bomb of, you are not the father. Well, a guy that was on Facebook, he inboxed me, basically telling me, that LaJoy was pregnant by Mr. Green. Now, have you talked to her? You've been talking yes. to her on the phone? Yes. And she's never mentioned I'm pregnant? No. The only reason that I did that, Your Honor, is because I, was, I felt as if I was holding on to the last strand of our relationship. However, Mr. Taylor disclosed that he has caught baby mama texting the other man. He told that she tried to settle with Mr. Green, but he denied the baby. So the mommy decided to make him adult and pin her child on him like this. Who is she texting? Mr. Green, can I name the baby after you to stand the third? Mr. Green saying, no, when I come around, okay, since he don't want to be there after she pursued to try to get him in the picture, he didn't want to. How did you see her messages? You looked through her phone? I went through her phone. And you could see it all there. I can't trust her. For better understanding and to create some sense, Judge Lake summoned Mr. Green to the podium and asked about the particular situation. He said that things were not in good circumstances when he started messing with Miss Jackson, so he asked her to move in with him. She told me that he had left her for a rap career Atlanta, just left and didn't want, want nothing to do with her, had nothing to do with her, didn't want to take care of the kids. So I told her that, that she that, that she can come stay with me because I don't, I don't want her on the streets, you know? The whole time she know be, she'd be, you know, laying in bed with me, I look over, she messaging him stuff. It sounds like you saw this as a potential relationship. It, was a, it was a partnership. Shack but up. from cheating to being caught red-handed, it revealed that the defendant changed her mind when she was kicked out of Mr. Green's house and got back with Mr. Taylor. But Mama denied the saga and shouted to her core to prove her point like this. You move in with I Mr. Know. Green. Yes, Your Honor. At what point do you go back to Mr. Taylor? When he dropped her. No, he didn't drop me. I left. I left. When he dropped her. No, I left. You did ask her to leave the house got an argument, everything went down, downhill from there. After that, shit, go. Like, yeah, I, I'm not gonna lie. Took stuff, put it outside. As you know, one lie has the power to tarnish a thousand truths. As it happened in this case, Miss Jackson first asserted that her fiancé was the father. But later, it turned out that she didn't even know who was the biological father of her baby because she swindled around both men at the time she conceived. You believe Mr. Taylor was the father? Your Honor, I, I don't know which one is the father because okay. I had sex with both That's of them. That, that is. Is. Bottom line is, is you really don't know. You yes, told I him know. he was the father. You messaging him as well. Telling him he the father. Because you don't know. Yes. Okay. It was evident that both parties were at daggers drawn and no one was ready to drop their allegations. One after another, secrets were being revealed in the court, but nothing was helping them to get the closure they needed. So Judge Lake pulled the strings and decided to announce the results. When it comes to three-year-old Raymond Taylor, as to whether his biological father is Mr. Taylor or Mr. Green. It has been determined by this court. His biological father is Mr. Green. I figured. If that's mine, that's good. And I respect you for being there. I was about to say, you got a good child now. Mr. Williams' life had been stuck in paying and dodging child support. And by now, he had enough of this lifestyle, so he wanted to end this once and for all. He claimed that he was not the biological father of 22 years old girl Clarissa, yet Miss Smith contricted him into this paternity run. Mr. Williams, you have brought Ms. Annette Smith to court today, claiming she scammed you into paying child support on her 22 year old daughter, Clarissa. You say you use condoms at all times, so you cannot be Clarissa's father. Yes, Your Honor. It was obvious that no one could be scammed into this kind of huge mess without being related. Yet Mr. William tried to prove that he was an innocent man who has done nothing wrong which led him into this dispute. And Miss Smith was the villain of his story. But the defendant closed his lie box and spilled the truth like this. A lot of outstanding money. When I met Eli, he never had a job. 
That's what I paid thinks. for everything. That's what, no, that's not true. Eli had money when he got into a oh, car accident. Oh, my goodness. That's not true. We had a relationship. That's not true. We did not have a relationship. Yes, woman. we did. Up next, the woman explained the relationship saga. It slipped that the alleged dad was the only possibility of being the father, as mommy did not have any other guy. So when she told him about her being pregnant, he embraced her but later turned his back on her. You say this was a real relationship. Yes, ma'am. At the point that you realized you were pregnant, before that, were you sleeping with anybody else besides Mr. Williams? No. When you found out you were pregnant, did you tell him? Yes, ma'am, I did. What day? What was his the reaction? The same night. What day? What was his oh, reaction? I, I forgot the name that he said. wanted me to name, but he wanted me to have a boy. What? He And he seemed happy about it. Yes, ma'am, he did. But during the doctor's visits and the birth, Mr. Williams was not there? No. However, he was acting like a compulsive liar, but it looked like his words were not even helping him anymore. It turned out that he had an opportunity to get a DNA test, but instead of clearing this mishmash, he went ghosted. You when I was on Plumbed Assistant, Where they asked from? Eli to come to, down here for the blood test. Eli declined. Did you yes, have an opportunity is. to take a DNA no, test, sir, not. and you didn't? No, I didn't. And I got his address because when what? I went to California to see him. See, and now she's moving too far ahead for us, sir, because when she went to California... Because I'm telling the truth. She went to California to scope out my situation. The defendant claimed that Ms. Smith forged his name on the birth certificate by sending legal documents to the wrong address for financial benefits. But the woman gave him a sassy reality check like this. You're saying she purposely sent the... Yes. Gave the wrong address. Yes. So that you would then miss the court date. Yes and be named the father yes. by default. Yes. And then once you were named the father by default, you were put on child support. What not I could do? As it was apparent that the plaintiff's testimony was quite shady as he was putting on the defensive show with his false fibs. Even though no one was buying his baffled story, he continued stooping low with his nasty saga like this. So Mr. Williams, you say you always used condoms. As far as I know, always use condoms. What, I'm gonna take care of? I'm gonna put it on you too? No, you gonna put it in a, whatever you do, how Who you does do it with, that? You did. So wait a minute. What you're saying is you feel like there was foul play involved. <laughs> yes. Where she was trying to trap you. Obviously. I guess Mr. Williams should act mindful instead of swinging around back and forth. As up next, the defendant brought some pictures to support her claims. But the man asserted that he backed off because there was another man involved. This is you and the baby. Right. Man. This is a picture of you both yep. and Clarissa in California. Yeah. You look happy. You look like I mean, a you couple. Understand something. I'm one of them people that I won't take care of my responsibility if I think I'm responsible for it. But when I find out they're in the line, I'm not responsible and it's definitely somebody else involved. Apparently, both parties were at odds and were making things more difficult in this mess. So Judge Lake summoned Clarissa. She testified that Mr. William had never bothered her and was the true definition of deadbeat daddy like this. Do you remember him being in your life when you were growing up? When I was five, he called me. That's all I remember. But since then, you don't remember anything? No. You have not seen him? No. No birthdays? No. She would get packages every holiday, every Christmas, every birthday she would get them. Do you remember receiving gifts from your father? Never. Nevertheless, the young girl told the court that his alleged dad had missed out on so many things and she wanted to have a father figure and fatherly bond in her life, but he had never thought of being there for her in her 22 years of life. You missed out on my entire life. I wanted to have a father to brag things about in my academic life. I wanted to explore if to, just to have fun with a dad right beside me all the time. Someone to support me. You were never there. Hmm. This silver woman had missed the foremost part of her life due to Mr. Williams' doubt and negligence of knowing the truth, as their back and forth squabble was not helping, and the plaintiff's crazy acting was sparking more turmoil in this conflict. The only way to know about the truth was to reveal whatever DNA envelope was hiding. Mr. Williams, you are her father. I'm sorry. Thank you.